Like you sack the Hagak to mill yourself for eight, and then you bring it back, exiling five and convoking two. Like it's not, not a big gain, right? Strip mine sacrifices. Yeah, so does the blood token from Epic here. And Vista. Crucible Vista is an interesting way to interpret a sacrifice step. Splinter Twin sacrifices at end of turn. Oh, it exiles at end of turn. Okay, fuck Splinter Twin. I'm kind of feeling the epic here. Hmm. Well, I would like to cut off Yawgmoth colors. I guess I'll take a Badlands. No, Kiwi Splat. What are you talking about? The whole point of streaming is to have live games. And it's not like there's like a bunch of dead time I need to kill where I would need backup battles, right? Why would that be a useful or desired thing? As a viewer. Like you literally just had a minute. <laughs> a minute there of waiting for the queue to fire. While we like talked about the the stip and stuff. Would you like have liked to have a minute <laughs> of, of gameplay? Oh, Voidwalker's Sacrifice. I think I'm into it. Bloodstained Mire says Sacrifice. <laughs> I have played Ganlander. I like it. Three out of four cards. Sacrificing things. Voidwalker's a cool one because we could even get like a mini engine out of it. Like bringing it back over and over. Stalker Sacrifices. I think Bitter Blossom's just like a lot of sack fodder, though. If we do end up with Yawgmoth, we're gonna be really happy we grab this card. So even though both of these cards say Sacrifice on them, I think Bitter Blossom fits the stip a little better. Oh, hello. Yeah, I'm gonna grab Fulminator and then hope to grab um, that two-man artifact that gives the ability to things. So then we could sack Bitter Blossom tokens to blow up lands. That could be cool. Soul Cauldron, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> you know that card I've played in like every format it's legal. <laughs> Just a ton of. Hello. Fucking hello. I forgot this one was in the cube. This is perfect. I feel like really rewarded for dipping into red now. Also rewarded for that Bitter Blossom scoop. Your favorite set card? Love it. A classic. I've been trying to get it to work in um, in pre-modern. Had a few decks with it in Fecundity. I I had a Jund version together that was actually like pretty explosive, but it could just like never beat a burn deck ever <laughs> in a million years. The mana base was too painful. Would I like to declare anything like a sacrifice? Not yet. I guess Geeks could work with a bit of Blossom. Oh, you're, oh, you're with Goblin Bombardment? Yeah, that could be sweet. I'm gonna grab Pyrokinesis here. Make sure we don't get rolled by creature opponents. Pylon seems like a good removal spell for this deck, but I kind of like Relic for opposing things. Oh, the Faithless Looting might be really strong. If we get stuff like Inti in here. I don't, I don't take the pylon, but I'm not not convinced it's correct. Curtains is good. I'm gonna take Lingering Souls just in case. Just in case we decide to splash. Like Bitter Blossom, the Lingering Souls can just give you like a ton of sack fodder. On color mocks, hello. There's an altar of dementia here, but currently altar doesn't seem to fit our plan very well. It just says sacrifice on it. I'm gonna grab the mox jet. An altar probably wheels, huh? It 
Excuse me? What are the odds we get this Woe Strider back, huh? I'm gonna take this Ragavan. Increase our power level. Give us some of the opponent's cards to sacrifice. It also generates treasure, and you sacrifice treasure. I also think there's a really good chance the Woe Strider comes back to us. I'm thinking Vamp here. I think we're putting together like something of an engine deck, and Vamp will be able to find the whatever piece we're missing. Even if that's just like turn two bitter blossom. Is Rag better than fourth? Rag is, Rag is better than fourth for what we're trying to do here. We care less about inevitability because we have a lot of inevitability. Like ideally, we get the engine together. Like that is our inevitability, and we're not 100% splashing white. Like I have these cards off to the side because I'm not necessarily playing them. I think I like Verdant Catacombs here. Bobble could be sweet if we ended up with um, Luris, huh? That'd be a Sacrifice Engine Tomb. Maybe Sunbaked Canyon belongs. Sacrifice, Sacrifice. Courtyard. Let's take the Courtyard. Hey, there we go. There we fucking go. Luris is here too. I'm glad. I'm glad I didn't take the uh, the bobble. I'm gonna be like torn. The shadowy backstreet really helps with that white splash. Fire covenant's pretty fucked up. I feel like the white splash like helps our deck function though. We might be paying a lot of life too. Between the vamp tutor, bitter blossom, and yog. Oh damn, we got that Jarvis you raid. Welcome Jarvis. Hope y'all had a dope stream. Anyone that's not following Jarvis, y'all should. Great streamer, highly analytical approach to Magic the Gathering. Plays a lot of sweet formats. Legacy and Cube. 3-0 to Stip Draft. Commander cards mostly. Nice. All right, decision point. What do y'all think? I think Liliana fits this deck better than Altar of Dementia, but Altar of Dementia could be a sack win con. I just don't think our creatures are gonna be that large, right? To deck the opponent with Altar. I think Goblin Bombardment and Yagmoth have us covered. Oh wow, Jarvis and Amazonian. We are getting the fucking raids here. We are getting the raids here. Thanks for the raid, Amazonian. Hope you had a dope stream. Hope you had a great time. Are you streaming anything sweet? Y'all should give Amazonian a follow if you are not already. It's one of my favorite streamers to watch. Magic or none. Oh man, so many pumpkin dancers. That's a fucking party. Let's aim to Turok Wheel. I might not mean that again. Weirdly. Hey, too spooky. Thanks for the sob. Thanks for the 11 months. Aim to Turok's cute with the Voidwalker. But it doesn't really fit our Goblin Bombardment. Gogmoth plans, huh? Ideally, we'd have as many bodies as possible. We'd love a gut. Me too. White Splash looking better and better. Yeah, I think Lingering Souls just makes sense, huh? With the Bombardment and the Og here. I think I want Ophiomancer out of this pack. It's a little underpowered. I kind of like the Chrome Mox too. Ophiomancer and Bombardment and Yogg, though. You know, that's just like another engine, right? It's just like another Bitter Blossom or Lingering Souls. Sad to pass Chrome Mox. The fast mana is kind of important. Oh, hey. Yeah, as tempting as Scrubland or the Heath would be, we're going to take the Bowmaster's heal here. One of the better cards that you can get in Vintage Cube. And it's also multiple bodies for sacrificing. It makes a token for staff. You know, there's just a lot of little synergies in here. Just fits us pretty well. 
I'm just gonna throw swords in here. Let's see, we need three more playables out of this pack. Seems like we're gonna get there pretty easily. I think I'm gonna take the Blood Crypt. More, fix more fixing the merrier, right? I do not think Scrubland versus Bowmasters is tough. I'm slamming the Bowmasters. Our mana's like pretty good already. Scrubland might even wheel. I think about how late we got that Vindicated and the Lingering Souls and stuff. I think we got that Backstreet super late too. Whereas Bowmasters is like a pack one, pick one, a bull card, like a top 20 vintage cube card. That's just me though. Ooh, hello. Hello. This card fits the sacrifice theme, huh? This card's broken in half. Nice to have a few good cards in your deck, huh? At least a couple. Helps. <laughs> Helps a lot. Commando technically says sacrifice on it. Chain Lightning's nice and efficient. I've been really impressed with uh, Headliner Scarlet. And we like have that hole in our curve. I might jam it even though it's not exactly on step. Gotta win the game somehow, right? Yeah, Crucible almost works. Just doesn't apply much pressure here. I think I'm gonna throw the Preacher in the sideboard. Squee sacrificing every turn is a little piddly. You'd much rather play Squee if you have a bunch of discard outlets, right? So you can generate card advantage that way. The silent clearing would be decent, even though we already have a horizon land here. Yeah, we, we're paying a lot of life already, and Rankle is like very on theme, right, for a sacrifice deck. I think Grave Titan's gonna be a bit above curve. I guess Magda spits out treasure, which you then sacrifice. Jetmere Garden for like a plateau. I guess we can get it with Bloodstained Mire. It does come into play tapped though. Which I dislike. We already have one comes to play tap land. Yeah, all right. The scrub land wheel, as predicted. Throw a dam in the sideboard. Throw a three of inspector to the main board. Looks like we got a cut or two to make, huh? Hmm. I think our weakest main deck card is actually Fulminator Mage. We never got the um artifact thingy to combo with it. So it's kind of just a three-minute stone rain. It's a little bit better than that, but it's not great. Good enough as a sideboard card. Yeah, if your opponent's got a bunch of, like, comes to play tap trilands, it could still be sweet. In terms of, like, having to main deck it because it says sacrifice, like, you can make the same argument for Mind Stone or something, right? It's not... Not a super convincing argument to me. And it's a solid sideboard card, as was pointed out. My arch nemesis, Caracas. Yeah, right? There's a few legends in here. We do have Vindicate in the main deck, and then we can board it in versus Caracas decks for sure. Hey, West Ab, thinks the sub, thinks 18 months. We got two more cuts to make. Maybe I will cut that Vamp Tutor. The life loss might be a bit much with a bit of blossom and our mana and gix and stuff. And the Yogmoth. Is Pyrokinesis good with enough with the red count? I think so. This is like on the lower end of what I'd want for it, but card can save your ass. We have a solid amount of card draw, I think. Between the staff of the storyteller and the Yogmoth and such. So you're not cutting the Gix, even though it's good with a bit of blossom. Or maybe the Stalactite Stalker. The Mox Jet helps me kind of like jump my curve some amount of the time. So it's sort of like this in terms of ones. Wouldn't be a bad spot to try out the Stalker though. And our curve is such that we could justify playing 16 pretty easily. We have some activated abilities though. And some draw and some filtering. A few of our lands cycle or filter. Bolt the fetch is going to get the filter land. Yeah. 
Uh, depends on your win rate, Nucleotide, and the kind of magic you feel like playing. The 64 persons have better EV. But if your win rate's lower, then the leagues are way better. Yeah, they have better EV if your uh, win rate's high enough, I should say. And you can expect a lower win rate than um, the one you expect in the leagues going into them. Because the opposition's tougher. So it's not a not a clean, simple answer. So this would be nine white sources, which is way more than we need, right? Because we only need a single white ever. Eleven black sources, which is close, but I'd like more, like 12 or 13 with all these doubles. And eight red sources. I'd prefer nine. So this would be seven white. Seven white, nine red. That doesn't make sense. It should be eight and eight, right? So 12, eight, eight. We could also cut a swamp and go down to 11 sources and put the stalker back in the main deck. I kind of I kind of like that. Let's do that. Could turn to vindicate. Hey, pause the tea. Takes the 60 months. Just gonna play Karizev on two. Oh, just gonna play Bit of Awesome on two. That looks like a target for Bullmasters, that it does. Kind of looks like that was their one green source, huh? Sure. Oh, show it up. Hey, Kapooplin, thanks for 34 months. Opponent has not really attacked us yet. We're at 13 to the 22. But they are down to one card. We do have more board presence. Oh, hello. Wow, <laughs> Lilian Optics hits a madness that they don't have the mana for. Oh, that's so good. The card's fucked up, too. Legend joined the tunes, Wimpy Bones. I think Gix is going to come out for Preacher. I'm considering, like, damning him to Turok here. Maybe Fulminator is good. If they're playing three colors. Yeah, let's get Spirit out. Play Fulminator. Is the Liana worth cutting because they have mana stuff? Nah, it's still sweet. Just be aware of it. Remember that you do not have to uptick Liliana. Secret third mode.
So the cool thing about getting Liliana down and upticking is that you get it close to an ultimate. I think we need to apply pressure though. Get them to double spell on their turn so Liliana can take them off library. Let's just Liliana edict them. No, let's just vindicate this library. I always gotta reassess, huh, when you draw a new card. Think things through again. Think about cycling this Jemir's Garden, hum. Oh no, that makes the Liliana Edict well worse, hum. Interesting. Yeah, our curve is pretty tight, so we don't actually need like the fifth and sixth mana source. Whereas their curve goes up to dragons and such. Next turn we can cycle this uh, Jemir's Garden. Look for a red card for the Pyrokinesis. Hoping they don't have dragon here to clear Lily. Damn. Fuck. Would have worked out way better if I just played the Ophium Answer, hum. Why not swing? Because I had a Planeswalker in play, Mondulov. I thought being able to block was better than attacking. In this spot, I'm at 17 to their 19, and they're hitting me in the air with a Goldspan Dragon, so hitting them for three is not very good when they can hit me for three back. So last turn, we weren't attacking because we wanted to protect our Planeswalker, right? Intuitive. And this turn, it's much, much more about the fact that we are currently losing, and we don't want to die quite as fast. We want to give ourselves a little bit of time to draw out of it, and give ourselves a chance to get a red source of this Pyrokinesis, get the Ophimancer down, that sort of thing. We don't want to race when we're losing the race. You want to slow the game down. Well, if they're out of removal, maybe Ophimancer can help stabilize. Oh, shoot up. Hey, Spell Skittles, takes us 65 months. You beat me in a race? Probably. I'm not a very fast human being. I'm a lot of torso, and that, that torso is very large. <laughs> Built for comfort, not for speed. Yeah, exactly. My tummy makes a, makes a very good shelf, but it's not very aerodynamic. Kind of feels like they're going to play a Pyrokinesis of their own here, huh? All this mana floating at instant speed. I don't think we can beat one from them. A kicked burst lightning. That I was not expecting. Lelia found a Chandra. Jesus. Oh, she went up. Hey, Chase. Thanks for the nine months there. No, I don't know who that is, Chase. Chase. 
One more burn spell, shame. And even if they hadn't found Chandra, they could have uh, played Firebolt and then flash it back the next turn. Yeah, cutting the Gix made sense. I do like having the Pylon in here too. I'm not sure what I'm cutting for it. Maybe I just won't play him. As good as that card is. Just have everything be board presence focused. What archetype I enjoy drafting the most? Oh yeah, that's um. So the sand is missing white white uh, a white source, but it's pretty good otherwise, right? Turn one Ragavan, turn two Dothy. Yeah, my favorite archetype is Gruel Gruel Aggro. The pump spells in it are kind of cool. It's always bad spell skittles. We would play him to Turok over it, and we're not playing him to Turok, right? Uh, hello. <laughs> Could have played Staff there, and then you're like building up more value when you do play the Lingering Souls, but casting the Lingering Souls means we're not dependent on the Ragavan for the flashback. So this is getting like a lot more of our hand active, I think. Hell of a hit though, huh? And Soul Ring. Now the Ragavan's still going. Possible I should have left the figure to figure out. Played Kari's up there. A bit more of a pressure. I guess we could pump the figure. A little bit worried about Fiery Confluence here. So I'm gonna just do this with my turn. Yay. No one drop here, but definitely a keeper, huh? With a bit of Blossom and Bombardment. We've got a comes to play tap Tryland that produces red and white for the Blood St. Meyer. Oh, God damn it. Okay. Hmm. Might have to play Kari Zevon too. Pyrokinesis. Pyrokinesis would help out a lot, huh? Um, at least the robber's just exiling all my sweet, sweet land drops. The best I saw Scarlet, my opponent had Caracas to rebuy it. And just prevent me from blocking for several turns. It's kind of been very similar to um, Hellrider for me, which it replaced. Hmm. Like the draw ability on it's pretty worthless because either they die or they have an answer for your things. That Black Lotus card is pretty good. It didn't help that my uh, my hands on the slower side, hum. Like we'd have Swords of Plowshares or a Pyrokinesis in the opener. We would not be struggling. <laughs> Such is the nature of Vintage Cube, hum. Well, that's helpful. I don't know if it's good enough, but it is helpful. I guess I'm playing Bombardment here. I'm killing these things. If 
sure you a lot better than pyrokinesis there, huh? Because then I could kill one more thing. Anyway, we get that third land that we can play Lingering Souls. That should clean up things. Or at least the current board. They can always add to it, of course. Oh, they didn't attack. I'm just dead. Just dead on board. Or no, I can block and then sack, kill the other, take five, go to one. Oh well. And then if we have the third land, Lingering Souls, double block. Preacher once again coming in for Gix versus Aggro. I think I want Dam here, hum. Dam over. Pylon's been kind of clunky. I guess I'll cut that one. No attacks. Very often people don't attack when they just click through their attack step on accident. It's not like a crazy play or something, you know, it's just a mis clear mistake. Not a remarkable thing at all. This opener seems a lot better, huh? We're on the play. So the Bitter Blossom's not going to be too slow. And then the Pyrokinesis, if they have a similar opener to the last game, the Pyrokinesis was going to be real strong, huh? Bit of Blossom plus Staff might be hot. Hey, up, Mr. Lost Music? A really grindy game going with this tank. I mean, that's kind of what we're doing here, huh? I kind of like pitching the Ragavan. Instead of this Bone Crasher Giant. Ragman's more of an early game card, hum. A little healing salve action. I think that's legit when we have Bitter Blossom here. The opponent's uh, played a bunch of burn spells. The opponent's creature is mostly a 2 mana 3 2. They can exile a card from a graveyard when it attacks, and then if they have three creatures of different powers. They can gain hexproof and can't be blocked by creatures of the color they name. Comes up rarely. Hey, we're gonna hit in Parallax Wave. Yeah, I'll play that. Why wouldn't I? Eagles of Dunnort. Just doing Ragavan things. Protection is very confusing to new players, yeah. Um, after seeing their sweeper, I kind of do want to play the Sim to Turok. I don't know what I would cut for it, though. Maybe Ragavan on the draw. Awkward to lower the red count for Pyrokinesis. We never even had to play it that game. Or I'll, I'll keep it over Stalker. How about that? So this hand doesn't have Pyrokinesis or Swords, but the mana's good, and we do have, like, Acceleration, right? 
the turn one BB. Hey, scrap all things the 12 months, the full year. You just had some tasty Mexican food, and now you're ready for some Sunday cube chillin'? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hmm. What are the odds that they play a creature on turn two, hum? Because we could play the garden for sure. I have three mana for Liliana. I'm questioning whether I want to turn one Bitter Blossom. It's possible they don't play a creature here and we still also rip for Liliana. I think they're less likely to play a creature if we play the Kari Zev, right? And they might kill the Kari Zev now. Might have to play Bitter Blossom. Stomp, sure. I think they thought that Oyer would work on creatures. Looks like I was right about playing a creature, making them less likely to jam a critter, hum. Well, now if we had an untapped land, Liliana might just swing this game entirely. Wouldn't that be nice? Come on, deck. Nice. Sacrifice a creature, please. And then we attack with Karizev. I think Liliana makes wants to have been the Bitter Blossom here. Yeah, I mean, I've been a bit of Blossom, cast Lingering Souls. And then uh, next turn I can go Staff plus Flashback. God, that land hit for Liliana was so important, Tom. Um, it was also very important for them to not play a creature out. On their turn two, kind of the only way I could have won this game. Not that I've won it yet, you know. I'm not counting my chickens over here. That sounds like a lot of work, counting chickens. Yeah, I'll try block. Let's go. Yeah, chickens are a gateway drug lead on to counting sheep. You should only count sheep if a doctor prescribes it. Wait, what? Oh, they fire blasted? Amazing. a handy uh, source of plowshares rip, huh? We're just drawing really well this game. We've been drawing well the whole league. Like This should have been a trophy with how well I'm drawing. Cards lining up. I haven't really gotten our sacrifice engines going, which is kind of crazy because we have three of them individually. Oh, perfect. Correct, Red Mang. Yeah, counting sheeps is used if you you can't sleep. Must be the same everywhere. I wonder how that got started, huh? Shepherds in the hills with nothing to do. Oh, we're two and zero. How about that? Uh, sure. A lot of interaction here, but we're not doing anything on turn one and two. The downside. This opener would have been really good against both of our last opponents. Might be too slow against whoever this is. Maybe I should have played the Sunbaked Canyon to have the Bone Crusher Giant shock up. 
Okay, they're Boros, nice. Cool. I'm gonna leave the courier around because I think that's gonna be nice. Nice way to get Pyrokinesis value. Oh, we could the Leon Edict. I gotta dig that. Hey, thanks for the luck. Team kills. The civilians do see modern play and legacy play. Burning spell on Lily, sure. Just collected a nice little two for one. No loot with the scrapwork month. They like their hand. I was gonna broadside here, but now I come on Bowmaster, huh? Really wanted them to stamp off that blood token. What their hand is here, um, oh, that's pretty good. Just collecting my whole board, um, maybe casting Bone Crusher is where it's at here. So the Ragavan Dash. The cool thing about Ragavan dashing is we probably play most of what's in their deck with two mana. Yeah, three red mirrors in a row, hum. Oh, Fimans is great, but the Scarlet draw might actually be relevant in this game, hum. That's pretty good pressure. Play was perfect, no notes. The Pyrokinesis. Yeah, I guess if I wait till beginning of combat, then they wouldn't have two mana for um, creatures and stuff. Fortunately, they could only use one mana, <laughs> so it was the same. Hard cast fire blast, fire blast, shame. And now they're hellbent. The lava mancer is going to be able to clear Ophiomancer, but maybe that's okay. Still get a value snake. Five, six drops. I mean, Fire Blast is kind of a zero drop. I don't want to sack the Sunbaked Canyon because it's my only red source. Ooh, I like how you think, Spawn. God damn it. I really want to sack that canyon. I want to sack it so bad. <laughs> How many red cards are in the stack? We've seen five already. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight in the deck total. I think we can sack this canyon. I'm gonna do that. There's only two red cards left in the whole deck. Oh, that's a hot one. It's a hot tamale. That's all right. Red lands are live now, huh? 
We're also getting into this card, this Karizev, uh, not turn sooner. Yes, this Karizev and Goblin Bombardment are the two. Or wait, no, did I miscount? Yeah, there's the one mana drain thing too. Yeah, I miscounted, but no matter. Karizev's kind of cute with staff. He like sacrificing the sunbake there, makes more of my deck live. Yeah, the red sources. <laughs> this Lava Mancer's doing a lot of uh, work. Kind of wild that they weren't bringing back Mudder and sacking the Blood Token on their turn. Like they liked the card in their hand, but they didn't advance their board. Maybe they just should have attacked. Maybe it's another like quality removal spell. And now they're gonna kill Karzev. That's it. My other one one. Feeling that way, hum. Whereas they might have killed both my 1-1s one because they're so low. Commando, interesting. You like Kariza with Staff and Gut? Oh yeah, same. Yeah, we didn't get a Gut in this deck. Beautiful sacrifice card, that Gut, hum. A lot of fodder for it in here, too. I think it changes every, um, every time we're tracked. Fumble Dicking. Fumble Dicking's a great one spawn. Fumble Dicked up a match earlier. Someone, another uh, another viewer used. Was this Fire Confluence? Declaring. It's not bad. Oh man, I'm spacing on it. Dick Nipples. Yeah, someone in chat said odd dick nipples the other day. And I was like, oh, that's, that's mine. <laughs> I don't have any graveyard value here, do I? Six mana for an Oliphant. Man, it sure would be nice to get a break, huh? What's our best answer to that? Vindicate? I think the Bloodstained Mire is a surveil land to gram. Maybe I actually should have fetched it now, because if you find Lingering Souls, you can flash it back. Rep lethal next turn. Great. Well, uh, I felt very ahead for most of this game, but my opponent, my opponent drew pretty well. Played to their outs. We flooded a little bit. Where were you? Once again, Preacher coming in. I don't know if I was supposed to be cutting gigs for this. More cards would have been great that game. I guess we're still hemming. Yeah, let's play Gix over Pylon. And the dam should probably be in, but whatever. This ain't slow as shit. But I do like Preacher and Aggro Mirror. Could be wrong, huh? Given the mocks there. Probably supposed to bin it. Got me. They just have so many things that deal three damage to the preacher, right? I want to make sure I at least get my value duder out of it. I really don't want to play the canyon. Oh, shoot it up. Hey, Emerage. Thanks for the sub. Thanks for the two months. Yeah, we need to get to a spot where we can actually keep the lifelinkers around, Tom. Um... Oh, hell yeah. Those are some good hits on their part, though, huh?
actually like weirdly close to lethal on no blocks. Because just hugging, hugging Yogg is six damage. I wonder if that firebolt's going to my face or at the broadside, huh? Yeah, this is my chill playlist you done. Should be in the stream description. I think they have Fire Blast in hand. So they're trying to get me down to six, so the Firebolt plus Fire Blast is good enough. Could be wrong, wrong but that's the impression I had while they played. Hey Soap, since the 15 months there. Check out Bill Murray when I get the chance. Oh yeah. Love me some Bill Murray. I also liked his uh his track with Jonathan Young. That was cool. Yeah, Iggy Ag Popkit is uh is one of my favorite albums. I think it's his best. So Fire Confluence beats me pretty handily here. But we do beat Fire Blast. So I guess it comes down to whether we, I was right or not, huh? Interesting. Well, if I'm right about Fire Blast, I am dead to this Athari, huh? Or no, lifelink from the vampire token. Interesting. Oh, and I've got a spirit token that can block too. So them going up to three, going up three, going up to nine. Yeah, I like the sack. Keep them at six here. Well, then we can shrink this and only take one damage there. So we're only going to take two here and go to five. So Fire Blast isn't lethal. And then the Headliner Scarlet has haste. So we should be good. Although they get to Fire Blast. The Scarlet, right? And then they they live in... I don't see any other block, though. I think what we're going to do is we're going to sack here. They're going to end up like Fire Blasting the Scarlet or the Preacher or something. And then we'll just like die to the Athari attacking next turn. Although if we get an untapped land, then I guess we can flashback Lingering Souls. Maybe that's enough blockers. We'll see. I like leaving the black up. It's going down to five is fine because they need to Fire Blast to live if they have Fire Blast. And then we can use Yogg to draw into our land for the Bowmasters. Oh, they didn't have it. Oh, well, good. <laughs> what I've gotten there. I would not have. I would not have hit the. <laughs> I would not have hit the land for Bowmaster. It's a good thing. They, good thing they didn't have Fire Blast, Tom. Huh? I'm gonna cut him here on the draw. Bring in the dam. Man, the life loss of Sunbaked Canyon is pretty real. Pretty real. Pretty brutal to like not have the fixing when you need it, but maybe it should come out. We're at eight and eight, right? So now it's ten, eight, seven. One on attack all, make them think they live at one. 
so they might not blast the Bowmaster. Because if they decide to blast, then you don't have enough damage or it's this joint roller. Whereas my line, uh, if they decide to blast a creature, then uh, they get to lose. Right? Because the Yawgmoth can draw me like four cards to find the land for the, the Bowmaster. Or the Epic here that we did hit, and that would have also gotten us the last point of damage. I thought it was better. That fucking bridge is making me think about Dreams of Steel and Oil, even though I like kind of hate it. Let's get Gix for it. I never wanted to play Gix that game. I don't think I can keep this. We have a turn one Ragavan, but their deck seems really good against <laughs> Ragavan. And uh, the rest of my hand does nothing. Man. We don't have the white source for Lingering Souls yet, but if I have to pitch the broadside, it seemed like the card that could like actually be like four cards, you know, in terms of dealing with the opponent. Oh, cool. This could loot away the Lingering Souls and flashback without it needing a white source now. He's selfless where it does fulfill the step, Yeah, yeah. That's the main reason it's in here. Getting that sack on. I think I might like chain lightning the, the Voldaren or something. Oh, interesting. Cutting the canyons kind of the stem. Yeah, sort of. If we live because we don't die to our mana base, maybe it's better, hum. Oh, that's a bummer. Well, I was hoping that they would have a sorcery speed thing. I'm getting value off the Lava Mancer out like that. It's pretty brutal. Should have just chilled, I guess. Collect my value bank, huh? Yeah, we don't currently have a red card to pitch the Pyrokinesis now, but that felt awesome. They're not in 12 because they shocked. Mana Crypt, oh no. Smells like a big fourth turn, which would be a lot more manageable if we had a Pyrokinesis. But Broadside might be able to steal the Monarchy Bank. Might give me some counterplay, especially with Souls Tokens to sank. Oh no, they're leaving up a red. So they're going to fourth for like three here. And then they're just going to burn out the broadside and leave me with nothing. Oh, nope, they are going for full. Yeah, I think if we rip a red source for pyrokinesis, we're probably going to be totally good. And if we don't rip a red card for pyrokinesis, we're going to be fucked. <laughs> that's kind of, that's just kind of how it is. Oh, Preacher's interesting. What are Preacher's is better than Lingering Souls here? Can't do that, friend. It's got Menace. Then we get a Monarch draw here to potentially hit a red card from Pyrokinesis. Please? Please? <laughs> Come on, Dak. I need a little help on my Mold of Five over here. Well, I lost a Mana Crypt flip. That's a little help. Yeah, the follow up of Tharim. God, how good would Pyrokinesis be here, huh? It'd be so good. I get to gain life and offset the Mana Crypt. They get the Monarchy Bank.
Yeah, so many redraws towards a red card. And there's not that many in the deck. I guess I was supposed to, like, not dash Ragavan earlier on or something. Just, like, don't play the Ragavan. And then we would have had a clean answer to the Sathari. We had a lot of draws towards, like, a Vindicator or something, too, right? And, like, that would probably also be winning here. I'm thinking if I need to Lingering Souls, if I can play the Yogg. Pretty rare to beat multiple Athari hits. Yeah, Sword's Plowshares would have been insane too, hum. Just frustrating to lose with a removal spell in hand. When I could have played a little different. Oh, is this gonna be the that's just gonna be GG. GG! Cool little step there. We did get some sacrificing off. We never really got the ideal sacrifice matchup, which would have been White Weenie or um, or Green Mana Dorks, right? Like sacrificing tokens to Goblin Bombardment to clear Dorks would have been awesome. Mm. But we did have three Red Mirrors. <laughs> Just what we were looking for with our Bitter Blossom deck. Good stuff. There's some sweet matches in there. Even that last match, even on our Mold of Five, I could have maybe played a little bit different and gotten a better outcome. Cool stuff. Yeah, GG's.